Hi, my name is Bay Scott. I'm the Director of Community Innovation here at Nifty. And today we're interviewing Mike Nash on his quarantine collection that just dropped on our open beta. All right, welcome Mike Nash, uh, but you go by Nash, correct? Well, you know, most of my friends call me Nash, so. Um, okay. Yeah, Mike, Mike Nash, like Nash. Nash. It's pretty unique. Thanks. So today we're here to talk about your quarantine collection, and I want to hear a little bit about the inspiration behind it. Um, you know, I think like like everybody, when COVID hit, um, I'm, I'm a filmmaker and an artist. I just finished shooting a film in Atlanta, um, really cool kind of independent film on a serial killer, and I was sitting in Los Angeles. Um, locked down like everybody was locked down dealing with this like you know serial killer footage and i was like i, I gotta like like you know the walls were starting to come in on me so it's like I, I gotta do something else and i just started you know painting and and you know my, my art is really mixed media um it's digital it's acrylic it's oil it's watercolor um, but the inspiration for the quarantine collection, it was never really called, like, it's not like I woke up one morning and, and decided to do the quarantine collection. You know, it was after I had like painted for like a year and a half through being quarantined because of COVID, this, you know, uh, group of artwork just kind of, you know, amassed itself. Um, but what, what really fueled it was, um, you know, just being locked in um, and seeing what was going on in the world. Mm. You know, I just, I've always respected artists who hold a mirror up to society and, you know, have them look at themselves. And so my art tends to, you know, really be my own kind of vision of what society is kind of going through. So systematic shadows. Yes. Wow, exactly. I love that. What do you, in this open beta launch, do you have some favorite pieces that stand out? You know, um, I mean, I like, I like the big short series within the collection. Um, I like the today we'll fight back. I just, you know, that battle that took place between Wall Street and Main Street when a bunch of gamers you know, were, got pissed off because, you know, Wall Street was shorting GameStop, which was a company. I mean, it was, you know, it was a, it was a company that they used to go to and get their games and go home and play them. I mean, it was a pivotal moment in a lot of these kids growing up and, you know, Wall Street just wanted to short the stock so they could make some money on it. And these kids weren't having it. So they, you know, they got together and they threw discords and a bunch of other places, you know, went after these guys. Yeah, and no one ever thought they could win, but they got Elon Musk involved. Got got Elon about. I mean, it was truly a David and Goliath like story. It had yeah. never happened before. You know, where the masses, the the sheep, as some people call them, you know, came together, you know, in a flock and said, you know, we're done with this, man. We're done with you guys, kind of, you know, just derailing stuff that is important to us. And you know, because of that, we're gonna we're gonna hold you accountable. It's interesting too, because I think at that time, Robinhood froze some of those, right? Accounts from buying. Yes. And it, the app is called Robinhood. Yes. It's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, really? Yeah. Um, I actually was one of those people who bought and like, you know, two days after I bought Robinhood froze my, you know, my shares where I couldn't sell them. And I watched the stock plummet and you know, it's just, I mean, it's, it's just the world that we live in. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, 
you know, ethics and morals are kind of hard to come by. And, you know, it seems to be all about making money. And I don't know, I just got really excited as a creative person watching all these people, you know, with slingshots attempt to take the giant down. Yeah. Well, I think too, what you bring up is a real beautiful integration of the power of technology and people and also the heart of like creativity and sharing the soul behind, you know, everything that's going on. Um, when it comes to the work of, uh, cause you've been in the NFT space for a hot second as an artist, um, but your story connected to decentralization. Um, you've been in this decentralized technology world for quite some time, correct? I mean, I, I, I don't, I've been observing it from a distance. Um, like the, the decentralization of the banking system to me is, is really interesting. Um, you know, the banking system has its own way of doing things. And, um, you know, I think a lot of it is not great for like the, you know, the normal human being. And oh, so yeah. that's one of the reasons in, in that series, the, the quarantine collection, there's this blimp series where, you know, when you look up and you see like Goodyear, you see these blimps, you know, Snoopy advertising down upon the people. Um, that's why I created the decentralized blimp and, and the blockchain blimp. You know, I wanted to like almost create the biggest billboard that you could create from a visual standpoint where everybody's kind of looking up at this almost as if that blimp with blockchain, you know, splashed across it or, you know, decentralized splashed across it is, mm -hmm. is a North star or a, you know, a, a guiding kind of light for us to realize that, you know, this is where the world's going and um, it's probably going to be a good thing. I mean, look, the, the whole aspect of blockchain and decentralization, they have, you know, it's very fluid. It's very new. There's certainly some issues with it that they got to figure out. Um, there's a lot of theft going on in it. You know, when yeah. it first was presented to me, it was like, oh, it's like this decentralized banking system where, you know, there's no fees or anything like that. And, you know, as you get into it, you realize that, that the fees are enormous. Yeah. Um, so they got to figure all that out. Yeah, it's um, those blimps. It reminds me of um, promoting a, a technology for everyone, right? You're not really promoting a brand like we are so often doing and like a bank, right? It's very hierarchical or decentralization. Everyone owns it. So it's like the shared power. Um, I have a question too, if you want to talk further about this, what is the difference difference between your open beta collection of this quarantine collection and when we do your regular launch? What pieces and differences are we going to see? Um, I'm a little bit of a artist who tends to paint what um, kind of feeling at the point. And so I don't want to say I have split personalities, but my art varies, you know, just really depending on the space that I'm in. And you know, I have a lot of really different, um, that completely different from the decentralized space, the blockchain space. Um, a lot of it has to do with um, really kind of finding a, is there a kind of a happy medium between, you know, there's a lot of generative art collections that are coming out right now, crypto punks, um, you know, board apes. And I mean, those are obviously two that have been very, very successful. Yeah. Um, you know, is there, is there kind of a medium between those, that type of collection and traditional fine art? And so a lot of my work tends to, um, exist somewhere between those two. So you're kind of testing it out a bit. I am. I mean, you know, I was never really, I, I remember when I, you know, started making movies, um, you know, just having drinks with other filmmakers and actors and stuff, and we'd be talking about it. And, you know, technology was always, our imagination went past technology. And, you know, people on the cutting edge would say, well, someday, you know, technology is going to take your imagination to where, you know, we never thought possible. And a lot of us were like, mm, I don't know, like, you know, I, I don't know how that works. And today, like, we're in it. I mean, technology is allowing our imaginations 
to go to places that we never thought were possible. Yeah. And so that's from a, from a creative artistic, you know, standpoint, that's really interesting. And over the last decade, I've spent a lot of time really learning the technical aspects of, you know, a lot of these um, programs that you can use along with, you know, creating uh, art with your hand, but I kind of call it a hybrid version where, you know, it's some of it has, you, you got to use traditional artistic ability yeah. and then you combine that with AI and, you know, hope that you come up with something that, that, you know, is cool. <laughs> How do you see, so we've coined this phrase here at Nifty, meta pairing. So having your real life artwork and your artwork in the metaverse how do you see the vision of your work in the metaverse? So I've made a lot of environmental films and mm -hmm. moving into the, you know, this whole um, decentralized blockchain space has been a little bit problematic for me because of the environmental aspect of it. Yeah, definitely. And you know, I'd love to see someone really crunch the numbers on. So when you create a digital piece of art or a mixed media piece of art, and you're not using a canvas with wood that they cut a tree down from and toxic oils to put it all on and linseed and all of this stuff. And then when you sell it, you don't package it up and send it somewhere. You know, you just kind of push a button and the NFT is sent to someone. Yeah. So, so I'm wondering what is more environmentally more sound, you know, and, and I'd, love, I'd love to like, you know, I've actually thought about doing a film on it, um, but I'd love for someone to do a film on it because I think it's data that needs to kind of come out. So, but I'm still not positive. I mean, I'm, we're still trying to figure, figure all that <laughs> out, but I, I, I mean, I look, I think it's, I, I think the world is, um, I think people are going to, buy art to be able to have on their phones and their computers and to be able to hang their art in their condos or apartments or workplace in the metaverse or Decentraland or whatever. Um, so I think it's a new world. Yeah, you know, I, I always think back to MySpace. And so I was, you know, the OG on MySpace with coding and, and making my profile beautiful. And, and then we got away from this like customization of our our online identities in a sense. Um, and so it's really interesting to see the metaverse come through because I feel like it's like next level MySpace. I don't know if you remember MySpace. I do. Yeah. I do. It was like, I mean, it was, you know, the world could not exist without MySpace. And then. Yeah. You know, I'm like, what later. song can I play when people come onto my profile? Yeah. Um, yeah. That would actually be an interesting case study, what you bring up the environmental points. So maybe if someone's watching this video, you want to do that for us and plug us in? We would love that. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, one last question I have. Why choose Nifty to launch with? You know, so I jumped on OpenSea and Rarible and Nifty Gateway and all those places in December of 2020, January of 2021. Um, you know, which was kind of early on in it. I mean, there were certainly some people that were way before that, but, and I, you know, I went on and I, you know, I did everything that I needed to do and I opened up MetaMask wallets. And I actually, at one point had like four different wallets, which probably isn't a good thing, but most artists that I know, um, just, we're not technical, you know, yeah. we're, we're artists. I mean, we just, you know, and, and we also, <laughs> You know, people were like, oh, you got to go on Clubhouse, you got to go on Discord, you got to do this, you got to do that. And, and you do, but like, I'd rather be like creating something or thinking about what I'm creating rather than like most artists don't want to hype themselves up. That's just not no. what they do. You know, yeah. it's almost against our, the grain of what, you know, we believe in. So um, Nifty, you know, I, I, they're just a, they're a company that's, that, minimizes a lot of the things um, that artists probably ch are challenged with or don't like to do. Um, they embrace and they kind of, you know, white glove that experience and kind of onboard you in a way that I think just makes it a lot more um, 
comforting. And, you know, so even if you get on like, you know, these platforms and you sell and, 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 and you have, you know, some revenue coming in, like, is your, you know, is that money safe? Do I need to take it out as soon as I get it? Like, is someone going to hack into me? And, you know, a lot of us just aren't really experienced in that space. So having some tech people kind of with this umbrella over us protecting, you know, us is, I think, important. And, you know, hopefully they'll yeah. be able to deliver it at, you know, at a level that they're, you know, hoping to deliver this at. And they'll, they'll I kind of see them as a gallery. Hmm. Explain that more. Well, you know, a gallery takes your art, puts it on the wall, has a opening, invites a lot of people that they know that trust that if the, if the painting's on the wall, you know, it's actually, a, it's an authentic painting. Um, mm. You're not going to find out a year or two later that it was, you know, um, something that wasn't actually real. And so I, I think, you know, companies like Nifty, um, Nifty itself are going to help not only push art out with their um, kind of influencer model, but also I think buyers are going to come and because there's another person that's kind of doing the due diligence on, is this really this artist's work? Like, does he, yeah. when he says he only has 10 pieces, does he really only have 10 pieces? Or is he coming out with another 10 pieces a year from now? Um, you know, and I, I think that's all really, really important in the NFT space right now, because there are a lot of people that are just, you know, um, doing some uneth unethical things in the space. Oh yeah, it seems like most of the projects, it's maybe not bad people, but the intentions aren't fully pure. And so I don't think those projects are sustainable. So we I don't think really they are either. And I, I think there's a like, you know, I, I look wherever there is wherever a lot of people are making a lot of money, opportunists are gonna show up. It's just oh yeah, it's just the way you know life unfolds. And so, and we're seeing that now. And hopefully we can regulate that um, because there's a lot of really talented people trying to, you know, get their art seen. Um, one of the great parts about, you know, this new space, the NFT space, and, and one of the things that I also find incredibly troubling is, so in the art world, um, so many artists are stopped by gatekeepers. Mm hmm you know, um, and they're just like, you know, your art's not good enough, you know, to have, you'll never have it on a gallery, and it's all very just opinionated. And so they maybe stop painting or, or something like that. When I first saw the NFT world kind of opening up, I was like, wow, man, this is great. You're going to be able to put your stuff out there. The world's going to be able to see it. And, you know, quickly, some of these platforms became their own gatekeepers. Yeah. Where they were more focused on how many followers you had than actually whether your art was good or not. Mm. And that's not sustainable. No. Um, if you're going to have an art platform at the end of the day, you have to have some pretty solid art there in order for it to kind of have a long life. Um, yeah. So hopefully, yeah, I think some of them have realized that, that, and, you know, I, like I get, we live in a world where you want people to, you know, have big followings to, to yeah. send them there, but um but the, I think, you know, one of the things I hear a lot in the business world, because I've done a bunch of consulting over the years, is all you need is a thousand people or less to make, you know, really substantial amount of money in your life every year and continue to grow that. And so we always have this obsession with mass influence when really some of the most sustainable and honestly joyful communities that you can have are these like smaller intimate communities where you can speak your truth and like be heard by the people that are really meant to hear you. Yeah. And so it will be interesting to see how, you know, as nifty, as we grow, where that transitions into and how advocates play into that. But I know for one, I'm very excited to have you as a founding artist. And one of the questions I want to leave you with is um, what can we as a nifty community do to support you as an artist? Yeah. I mean, I think you've been doing it. It's, you know, you've assisted with the onboarding of, you got my wallets all straightened out where, you know, um, I know what 
I'm supposed to share with people. I know what I'm not supposed to share with people. Um, you know, I think at the end of the day, it just comes down to, and I think a lot of artists feel this way. Um, if Nifty can help bring, you know, drops, night, these nightly drops that seem to be everything and, and, and moving collections and stuff like that. If Nifty can help us position, um, you know, with some of these platforms, those types of drops. Um, you know, I love their kind of um, influencer, you know, mechanism where they, they're actually incentivizing people to push art that they like. Um, yeah. And if that art sells, they actually get a, you know, kind of a small um, fee for, for driving, you know, the, the art into the, into the world, I guess. But I think they're doing, I don't, I don't think there's really anything. I mean, you know, it's, I mean, I have conversations with, with you guys. And if I have something that I think would benefit myself or benefit artists down the road, I certainly voice my opinion on that. But so yeah. far, um, y'all been great. Well, thank you, Nash. Uh, we yeah, appreciate man. you being on here and I appreciate you being part of this opening founding launch. So you thank bet. you. Yeah, let's do it. Yay.